Susan called me and asked me if I would give a little bit of history of Howard County. Um, if I gave you everything that I have written down, we'd be here probably a year from now. And uh, Howard County has some interesting history. Howard County is my home. Howard County Mo. 1816 it began a long long time ago and so we are celebrating our bicentennial 200 years a treat that you should each one of you should do if you have not seen the mural that's in the circuit courtroom you need to go and see the mural in the circuit courtroom it's about the history of Howard County. And you need to look at all the artwork that's on the walls in the courthouse. The artwork there is Howard County subject matter painted and photographed by Howard County people. I like good artwork but I don't think the Eads Bridge in St. Louis has any business in our courthouse. I think it ought to be Howard County subject matter. I think you will be surprised, and I think you will be pleased, and I think you will be proud. So do yourself a favor to celebrate the Bicentennial. Go and see the mural, and go and see the painting. Howard County was established in January of 1860, and it was by the General Assembly of the Territory of Missouri. Before Howard County was established, Missouri Territory had five counties, Cape Girardeau, St. Genevieve, St. Louis, St. Charles, and New Madrid. And Howard County was taken from St. Charles and St. Louis County. Howard County had 22,000 square miles. That's a lot of land. That's big. And it also included some of southern Iowa. Hannah Cole was the first county seat. And of course, that is the below Boonville. The area of Howard County and the state of Missouri, plus 12 more states, was obtained through the Louisiana Purchase, and that was in 1803. President Jefferson was afraid that the French would take over the Mississippi River and New Orleans, and so he said, I've got to do something. So he sent an envoy to to France to uh, see if he could purchase New Orleans or that he could maybe purchase um, uh, Florida. But when they got there, um, Napoleon was at war with England. And so he offered the whole Louisiana area to buy. And um, can you believe he gave 11,250,000 for the whole territory. Uh, some buildings, arenas, and things of that sort get that today. So uh, that was quite a quite a cheap price, really, back in those uh, for how much they had to pay for it. President Jefferson wanted somebody to go explore that. We've got to see what's out there. What have I purchased? And so he uh, chose uh, Meriwether Lewis to go on an expedition to explore the land. And in June of that same year, he asked William Clark to join him. And they started their expedition, and they went all the way to the Pacific Ocean. They passed Missouri in the year of 1804. They arrived at the mouth of the Bone Fam uh, in, on June 7th, and they camped one night. 
They also arrived at the mouth of the Big Montauk Creek. And they saw some writing on some of the, the stones there. And they wanted to go see and look at that writing and see what that was all about. But they ran into rattlesnakes. Tons and tons of rattlesnakes. And they weren't that brave, so they didn't go look and see. But I do know that there are people here in Howard County who like to fish on the Missouri River and in our creek. So I ask you a favor. If you're ever fishing on the Missouri River and you go to the Monotau, uh, where the Monotau goes into the river, would you please check and see if the rabbit snakes are still there and come and report to me? Because I definitely am not going to go and see if the rabbit snakes are there. So if any of you go fishing, let me know if the rattlesnakes are still there. Howard County was known as the mother of counties because there was 29 counties and five counties and five parts of county in Iowa that were carved off the original. The first one to be carved off was Cooper County in 1818. And by the act of the legislator in 1825, Howard County was reduced to its present size, which is 463 miles. Square miles, I will say. Okay, we had four governors uh, before, how, uh, uh, before um, Missouri became a state. Um, oh yes, I know something I wanted to, to tell you. Um, on the northeast side of the courthouse yard, there is a bulletin board that explains about the mother of counties. That's another little side trip that you can make and, and go look and, and see how big of a territory that was. The first governor and of course this was the territory of Louisiana, was General James Wilkerson. The second governor was Meriwether Lewis. And of course he was known for all the exploration of the area, but um, he died from kind of mysterious uh, circumstances and uh, they think it might have been possible suicide. So uh, they had to come up with a new governor. So in 1809, President James Madison appointed Benjamin Howard from Kentucky. And he uh, was the last governor of the territory of Louisiana and the first governor of the territory of Missouri. Captain William Clark of the Lewis and Clark group uh, was the fourth, and he uh, remained uh, governor until we became a state in 1821. Our county was named for Benjamin Howard, who was the third governor. He was from Kentucky. His father was John Howard, and John Howard was a good friend of Daniel Boone. He was also a person who liked to roam around. He didn't stay home very good. And um, so it, the responsibility fell upon his mother. His mother was Mary Preston, and she was from a, uh, a prominent family in Virginia. As a young man, Benjamin, uh, fought uh, in some of the wars. He became a good Indian fighter. He started studying law. He started a political career and he was elected to the Congress and he was very active in his area. But then after Meriwether's death, um, Somebody needed to take over. So um, Benjamin Howard was named uh, to take over in 07. On February the 14th, Benjamin Howard went back to Virginia 
and he married Mary Armstead Mason. His wife only lived two years, so they did not have a long life together. Um, they did not have any children, and she was buried back in Kentucky, where some of her family were. In 1813, he resigned as the governor and became brigadier general in the army for the War of 1812. And one of the outstanding things he did was um, the Indians, by pushing of the British, were wanting to attack St. Louis in the War of 1812. They almost got St. Louis and the American Revolution, so they wanted to get St. Louis. But, I told you before, John, his father, was a good friend of Daniel Boone's. So Nathan Boone, his youngest son, of course knew Benjamin, and they got their heads together, and they planned out the defense of how the world they were going to keep the Indians from getting St. Louis. And so off they went to Fort Madison, and General Howard attacked from the front, and Nathan Boone, who was head of the Missouri Rangers, swept, swam up the Mississippi River and attacked from the back. And that was the end of that. There was no more problems with the Indians taking over in St. Louis. General Howard died in September 18, 1814, and he was buried in the Old Grace Church in St. Louis. Well, they said he... Um, uh, had been reinterred at the Bell Fountain Cemetery. So Millie goes trotting off to St. Louis, and I'm going to find his grave. After all, Benjamin Howard, he, our county was named for him, and I was going to take pictures, and I was going to bring them back to you and show you all this is where he was buried. And they told me he wasn't buried there. And I said, what do you mean he's not buried there? They say he is. They said, well, you can read anything on the Internet. He's not buried here. So I called some other cemeteries, and I said, well, what do you know? And they said, well, keep bugging Bell Fountain. Well, I bugged them again. And the man said, I'm not telling you again. He is not buried here. Okay, so I still go to some other cemeteries and say, do you know anything? Nobody knows anything. Can you just imagine St. Louis losing our General Howard? He's buried up there, but nobody knows where. Come on. Oh, that's terrible. Awful. So, I don't know where he's buried, and they don't either, so, boo, I can't bring you back pictures and show you where General Howard's buried. Transportation has been important in Howard County, and it's changed over the years. And um, uh, one thing, uh, in the early days, uh, the uh, Missouri River was very important to Howard County. We had steamers and then later barges going up and down the, the river. And uh, we had freight wagons going over our roads. And uh, after a while, in the mid-1800s, trains began to replace the steamers and barges. And we had three important trains in Howard County. The Glasgow had a spur of the St. Louis, Kansas City, and Northern, the Chicago Alton, and they had had the NKT. And many of the smaller towns in Howard County resulted from railroad trains passing through, and that included Armstrong. Armstrong. So, uh, so, um, so, um, this was something that uh, I thought you guys would be interested in. Another thing that happened that was unusual in our county was in 1854, we had a wooden plank road. 
plank, road, plank, wooden plank? Yes, wooden plank. It was 26 miles long. And it, um, and it ran from Huntsville through Roanoke and Armstrong on to Glasgow. And it was used to take it, taking farm products to the Missouri River to ship them up and down the river. They were made out of white oak, white oak. They were three to four inches thick and about 14 feet long. And they had three toll gates. Now, if you're going into Glasgow, and when you get to Mark Freeze's house, house is on the right, right in front of him, or right beside his driveway, is a monument. And it tells you that the plank road was right there, and that was one of the toll gates. So the next time you go to Glasgow, slow down and mark Freeze, wave at him, and then read that, that memorial that talks about the plank road and the toll gate right there. There used to be a four-horse stagecoach that traveled that plank road. Can you imagine how rough that would be? Wow. Wagons loaded with hay and corn and wheat and tobacco and other farm, pro uh, uh, farm products used the plank road. And of course, they were heading to Glasgow to ship them down the Missouri River. This plank road was in constant need of repair. The weather warped the boards, they curled, they rotted and it was just kept the men busy all the time just trying to replace them and turn them over. And so uh, in 1861, because of the cost and the workload, they found that it was unprofitable to keep the plank road going. Now then, I understand in Armstrong, there is a signage somewhere on the plank road. Now Cheryl and I took a little side trip and tried to find it. Now then, I think Armstrong ought to put up a little sign or a little something to tell me where that signage is. Where is it, Mary? Under the water tower. It's under the water tower. That's another bicentennial project you can do. Go under the water tower and read about the plank road. Okay, Howard County is my home. Of this, I'm very proud. A peaceful place to love and live. I'm boasting very loud. These things are from a song that is written about the Howard County song. And the fourth graders from the Fayette Public School come up to the courthouse to see the mural. They sing the Howard County song. And the principal there tells me that they do the Howard County hoop. And they do a great job of it. So if you want to hear the Howard County hoop, look up a fourth grader from Fayette Public School, and you can hear the Howard County Hoop. This is just part of some things about Howard County. There are tons more, and maybe I can share some more at some other time. Thank you, Mary.